from partying with the Diaz brothers <laughs> to getting kicked out of gyms and off stages. Oh, <gasps> Wagner just kicked AJ right in the back. Unbelievable. To fighting Jake Paul in a cage and never missing the opportunity to hop on the mic and play the heel. I originally signed up for this event to protect a bunch of innocent kids from their suicidal coward guru. Where's he at? AJ Egazarm is one of the most notorious and controversial figures in the sport of grappling. But when he was booed out of the arena at ADCC, was he being an asshole just for attention, or did he actually get screwed out of a match? AJ Agazarm started wrestling in his freshman year of high school and by his senior year had become one of the best in his home district of Hollywood, Florida, earning himself a scholarship at a small D3 school called University of the Cumberlands in Kentucky. While at Cumberlands, Agazarm was helping a teammate prepare for an MMA match when an injury took his teammate out of the fight and he accepted the opportunity to step in with little to no combat experience aside from his wrestling pedigree. By a stroke of luck and natural talent, Egazarm was able to get a first round rear naked choke finish and later told BJJ Heroes that he didn't even know what that was at the time. From there, AJ caught the jujitsu bug and started training at Gracie Baja Clearwater, where he returned from school for summer break. In 2007, Egazarm proved to have a real talent for the sport of jujitsu, winning both Pan Ams and World Championship at Blue Belt in his first year of jujitsu, all while training to become a better wrestler and making a transfer to Ohio State's D1 wrestling program where he would end up finishing his schooling. And this was just the very beginning for AJ who went on to win various titles and grappling super fights all around the world in both the gi and no gi at all belt levels, making him one of the most decorated American competitors at the time. Where AJ really made a name for himself was his toughness and unpredictability where his peers in the sport usually would play it safe. AJ stands just 5'6 and typically fights in the 145 to 165 pound weight divisions, but is no stranger to the absolute division of the biggest tournaments in the world, which of course have no weight limit. And even further, AJ has signed up for the ultra heavyweight division of the IBJJF Pan Am Championships, where every competitor is at least 220 pounds. And this is even crazier than him doing the absolute division because in the absolute he at least has a chance to be matched up with someone a bit smaller. But in the ultra heavyweight, everyone is just ultra heavyweights. And although he usually gets flattened out and smashed in these divisions, credit is owed to AJ for being one of the toughest SOBs that's not going to quit no matter how deep in a submission he is, where it looks impossible for him to escape. He usually just hangs in there, lets his leg or arm break, and keeps on chugging. Or he may result to different, more controversial measures, like walking out of bounds, to getting disqualified, and sometimes even going to sleep. Today at 32 years old, AJ's biggest achievements come at the black belt level in Nogi, where he has four European titles, a Pan American title, and even a world championship. And that's not to be overshadowed by arguably his biggest achievement yet, a silver medal at his first appearance of the ADCC Championships back in 2017. Eggersarm lit up the under 66 kilogram division that year, taking out Nicky Ryan, Ethan Krellenston, and Pablo Montavani on his way to the finals against one of the most accomplished legends in the sport, Cobrinha. And in his fight with Cobrinha, he only lost in the last minute on points. And aside from some aggressive collar ties, Eggersarm was pretty well behaved by his standards at this event. See, as you can probably tell at this point, AJ has a bit of a history. I wouldn't exactly call AJ a fan favorite because of his antics during jujitsu matches, but what's more is AJ never misses the opportunity to flaunt his personality. Nobody on the internet seems to have more videos of them getting punched, slapped, or struck in the middle of a jujitsu match than AJ Eggersarm.
off the takedown immediately. And maybe it's just because he talks so much trash, but he might just be a punchable guy. But there was a period around 2019 after he had fully committed to the heel role where the jiu-jitsu world stopped seeing so much of AJ Agazarn. And that's because he had made the full-time move to MMA. And his time in the MMA world started with a fight against Jake Paul, back when Jake Paul's punching looked like this. And I don't think he had ever stepped into a combat training room at this point. And in their match, the much smaller AJ took him down repeatedly, mounted and laid down some playful ground and pound before submitting him easily with an armbar. From there, AJ made his pro debut in January with Bellator and was off to a rocky start losing by split decision to Jesse Roberts, where he largely got outstruck and was up to his same old antics. And he fought twice more that year and twice in 2020, securing a couple of submission wins, but could never really get his striking down. In his last fight against Chris Lencioni, he lost a unanimous decision where he got outstruck and even outgrappled. And in true AJ fashion, he even threw a headbutt. And he had seemingly ended his MMA career on a low note, claiming that the decision should have been overturned because it was biased due to both guys having a previous relationship with one of the judges. Still today, he holds an MMA record of 3 and 2, but made his return to Jiu Jitsu in 2021 doing a handful of different competitions from ADCC to IBJJF rule sets. And he lost a lot. It seemed that maybe AJ's hiatus had taken him out of the scene for too long, and his game was outdated with the other guys constantly improving while he stayed the same. He was losing pretty handedly to pretty much everybody, until out of nowhere AJ signed up for the West Coast ADCC trials, the biggest and best trials in ADCC history. Normally a returning medalist at ADCC will be invited back, but because AJ wanted to move to the 77kg division, he had to compete at trials. And AJ showed up hungry to get to the 2022 World Championships, winning 5 matches including a massive upset win over John Combs where he relied on his D1 wrestling background to outscramble Combs in a decision win. And the only person he lost to that day was PJ Barch who went on to make it to the championships and finished 4th in the division. And AJ showing at West Coast Trials ended up being enough to get him an invite to the championships. And at the championships he drew Jeremy Skinner to fight in round 1. Skinner also attended a trials event, but it was the Asian Oceanian trials, where Skinner scored 5 out of 5 submissions with 3 inside heel hooks for a flawless weekend to get his invite. So going into the match with Skinner, AJ would know to look out for his dangerous leg lock game, but he found himself stuck in some leg entanglements pretty early. AJ, don't forget we said he's really good at leg locks. Oh yeah, that's right. Hmm, I might be in trouble. But AJ did a good job of staying out of danger and didn't look bad in the match at all. He even hit a few very nice cartwheel passes despite not being able to score any points in regulation. In overtime, AJ started the period with a low single that Skinner defended by stepping over into a reverse triangle. And the way scoring works at ADCC is a takedown does not count for any points until the person being taken down has accepted being on their back and the person on top can control them for at least 3 seconds. In this case, Skinner went into a submission attack, which means the points did not yet count for a takedown. But as the match continued, Skinner abandoned the triangle and accepted being on his back with AJ controlling, which prompted the announcers to say this. Looking up AJ. trying to make a crucifix play here. Yeah. AJ going to turn it into a cross. But he's going to finish the score down. This. There it is. Beautiful. So AJ work by will AJ. be up 2 nothing. So points haven't come up on the board yet, but I, I'm not sure how it wouldn't be a takedown because he did initiate it, fended off the submission and got up, but... But the two points never showed up on the board and AJ never got credit for the takedown. For the remaining minutes, Skinner worked to get a sweep while AJ worked to get a pass and both came very close, but the match ended this way with the only real action in overtime initiated off of AJ's takedown. But the judges felt this position was neutralized enough by Skinner's step over even though he ended up on his back. And in considering the attacks that Skinner had done previously, they gave the decision to Skinner. And that leaves the question, did AJ Agazarm get robbed? Well, I don't have the answer to this question because obviously you would need to discuss it with the judges who were there. But it does look to me that AJ scores in his takedown attempt in overtime. And if you ask AJ if he got robbed, well, the answer is yes. After the match was over, AJ refused to leave the mat and stood there in front of the erupting crowd, booing at him for holding up the event that couldn't go on until he left. Oh, okay. 
Oh, man. All right, so here's AJ being a little bit AJ. He thinks he won the match. AJ was holding up two fingers and shaking his head, showing that he was owed two points here for the takedown that he scored. And I gotta admit that I was at the event in the crowd booing with everybody else because it felt like a typical move from AJ. From my perspective, I was on the opposite side where AJ had fought and couldn't really see the match that well. But because of his history, it felt obvious that he was just being unreasonable as usual. AJ later posted this video on Instagram with the caption, We as athletes like many sports do this for a living. For this sport to continue to grow, we must protect the integrity of each and every match by forging a new path. That new path is video review. And this is going to sound crazy, but I think AJ is right. If the judges could have reviewed the video before making their decision, I think AJ would have won, and the announcers definitely agree with me. I gotta think it's AJ. J even if no yeah. nothing else, the just based down. on that sequence, yeah. the low single. And I'm not saying he handled the situation correctly at all. But in the heat of the moment, AJ's gonna AJ, and I'm making this video in defense of AJ because of people like me who weren't initially gonna give it a second thought. But imagine if Gordon Ryan or Craig Jones had been shafted on some points. The internet would have gone nuts defending them and would have asked for the referee's heads on a stake. So despite the boy who cried wolf, let's give AJ the same level of consideration even though he doesn't always deserve it. And the thing AJ is fighting for really does merit another look. Video replay seems like something that obviously should be part of the rules in 2022. Look at any other major sport that desperately relies on video replay almost every few minutes. And AJ may have had some impact on the sport already. I noticed that the IBJJF Pan Ams just this past weekend, they employed a new review system where some off-screen officials had video monitoring on the mats and would review certain moments and relay information to the referees who now wear earpieces. And I don't think they did this for all matches throughout the day, but they did in the finals and I think it was successful to quickly tell the refs if they made the right call and keep things going because God knows they don't always get it right and in the past there's just endless debate without any video evidence. Was this change that took place because of AJ? I don't know, but it did stir up some conversation that I think will benefit the sport. Whether you love or hate AJ Eggers arm, let me know if you think he should have earned those two points at the event and if you like the idea of video replay for the next ADCC championships. Thanks for watching.